welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo. And I'm Ms. Joan Marie Moussi. And I'm afraid I have to move us a little over to get us in the camera here, in the shot. And okay. uh, <laughs> we're all right in my head. All right, I think we're all right. See, there's nothing worse than looking at yourself in delay. Guys, I try not to involve you in the technicalities of everything, but sometimes that happens. Steve Bloom, welcome to Let Them Talk. My pleasure. And a pleasure to have you here. It's our, your first visit to it. It is. It, it is. is. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, well, we're going to talk about your book, which is my, you and Shirley Halpern. This wonderful book that's behind us right now on the screen, folks can see. It's called Reefer Movie Madness. It's got a long name, so I have to like help myself. The Ultimate Stoner Film Guide. Now, Steve. And it's thick. Yeah. It it's is. not a skinny yeah. book. Oh, 336 <laughs> pages. Tell me, 336 pages. Now, The Ultimate Stoner Film Guide. What is uh, a stoner film? Well, a stoner film generally is a movie with drugs in it. Okay. You know, that's the first premise. Uh, and particularly marijuana. Mm -hmm. uh, most people associate a stoner film with marijuana. Uh, in our book, we say marijuana and other drugs. We don't leave out other drugs that are right. in movies that sure. are stoner movies, but may not be in the same vein as some of the mm -hmm. more humorous marijuana sure. stoner comedies. And then there are a lot of movies that are stoner movies that people like to watch movies sort of stone baked. You know, there may not be any weed in it, but mm -hmm. it just makes them laugh. And there's a lot of movies like that in the book. Or uh -huh. there, or there are sci-fi movies, you know, that don't have specific drugs, but they really have a visual appeal. Now, Steve, what's the earliest movie you have? Uh, Home on the Range it goes back to 1929. <laughs> it's a silent movie with uh, cowboy smoking pot. Oh, First wow. time ever in a movie. Uh, well, let me think. It's, it might be 24 uh, or 29. Uh, it's a silent. Um, also have a, a very uh, early version of uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which I consider a stoner movie because of the nature of the transformation that mm -hmm. uh, that the uh, doctor goes through. Um, but the book really is inspired by Reefer Madness. So 1936 is really our starting point of the book, uh, and you know the story of drugs in cinema really begins there. Well, Steve, I want to get to the beginning because I want to talk about these movies, but first I want to start by saying, why do you, Steve Bloom, I mean, I know the answer to this, but everybody out there might not know, where do you get the expertise to discuss stoner movies? Well, as you know, I worked at High Times for many years. We worked together uh, in the 90s, and uh, I started there in 89, and I was the news editor, and then I became the music slash entertainment mm -hmm. editor and senior editor. And during the time that I was in that period of being entertainment editor there, uh, I covered music extensively mm -hmm. and we did a lot of great music coverage, uh, got a lot of great bands in the magazine on the cover and it was something I was very proud of. And then as time went on, I just took an interest in movies as well. I thought this was an area that the magazine wasn't really covering mm -hmm. and there was a lot of interest, but the magazine really wasn't serving the readers in that respect. How would you do that? Do more m movie reviews, do more interviews with you know, with subjects, you mm -hmm. know, involved with, you know, dr drug-related movies. And so I started studying this, mm -hmm. you know, during those years when I was at High Time, starting about 1999. 1999, year after, I think yeah. you were there, right? Or kind no, of... I was right, in 98, right, yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, and 99 was the 25th anniversary, a lot of lists of top 25. So I generated a list of top 25, or actually turned it to top 50 stoner movies of all time. And that was the beginning of my interest in the subject, when I sent out that um, uh, that ballad to people mm -hmm. uh, that back then, some of them just by mail, uh, and even to people like Hunter S. Thompson, and then got the responses and then put together this list, and that's where I really kind of started, you know, compiling all mm -hmm. of these movies. And then, you know, while at High Times, I started the Stony Awards show, uh, and so that was celebrating marijuana and other drugs in movies and television. And so I just, you know, really went into, you know, like deep into it, where mm -hmm. I was just going to watch everything, mm -hmm. and not only what was happening currently, but you know, dig into the past. Really didn't do all the past stuff until we worked on this book because I really had the mm -hmm. reason to really watch a lot of movies I might not have seen but were on my list of movies to check out. Uh -huh. So I just started studying it back then. Okay. So do well, you eat a lot of popcorn? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> Honestly, I do. I go to a lot of screenings, and a lot of the screenings, you know, sometimes they're in a screening room with no popcorn, and sometimes in a regular movie theater uh, with popcorn, and I, I just can't help, I can't help myself. <laughs> what's the, um, what's the mm -hmm. most recent movie you have in the book? Um, hmm, most recent would be maybe a movie like uh, um, The Men of Stared Goats, uh, a movie uh, with an LSD theme uh, with uh, Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges had a really good year last year with Crazy Heart and The Men of Stared Goats. Yeah. 
Maybe a movie like that, or uh, the, uh, Shrink, a, movie, a Shrink, a uh, late 09 movies. Uh, yeah. We really had a cutoff towards the end of 09 where we couldn't mm -hmm. add it anymore. So, but it's not just marijuana movies, it's all drug movies? Yeah, for instance, like Scarface. You know, right. how can we leave Scarface out of the book? But when we put the thing together, my co-author Shirley Halpern and I, you know, discussed this at length, uh, what is the content and tone of the book that we want. And Shirley was a little bit more inclined to stay with the marijuana side of things and the, light, the lighter side of, yeah. you know, stoner movies. And I kept pushing for the darker side uh -huh. <laughs> because I felt that that's all part of the story, sure. you know, that you can't leave blow and traffic and, and the man with the golden arm or things like that out of this book. Right. I know it's that's, what I, that's what I wanted to cover anyway. Right. So what, we combined us. our interests. Tell us a little bit about Shirley, your co-writer, too. Well, Shirley also, like Shirley also has a High Times connection. Mm -hmm. um, did we all work together? At one point, yes. Yeah, in about did. 98, because Shirley right. was there like 97, 98, 99. Absolutely. In those years, she was managing editor. Uh, she was a photo editor. Uh, I met Shirley when I was uh, working at High Times. I was doing an interview with Fish at mm -hmm. Electra Records. And Shirley was at... Um, uh, she was at Rutgers at the time, and she was an editor at Rutgers, and so she was there interviewing the band before I got the, to do my interview. And Shirley just like, so oh, who's next? And she saw it was High Times, and she stuck around. Uh -huh. And <laughs> she met me, and then she interned just slightly for High Times. She didn't really like interning much. And then she had a real good interest in uh, photographers, and she also had her own magazine called sure. Smug, and she had brought a lot of good photographers into Smug, so she would say, hey, maybe you want to use that person for High Times. And then I was able to get her into High Times as a part-time photo editor and then she was hired I think as I hired her yeah I she, hired her right, right. Yeah, and then hired her and then and I was hired happy I did. she wasn't she your was managing good. editor was she no she was the photo editor yeah, we brought, was, I, brought I, her. I remember but I don't want to go because okay. that goes off the story right, right. into my history <laughs> in the magazine business because I, I worked on a couple of about entertainment, right? Yeah. She's well, she, West, she, she lived in New York uh, during those years, and then she moved. She got married and moved out to California with her husband. Uh, she lives in L.A., and she's just taking a new job with the Hollywood Reporter. So yeah. she's really... Oh, wow. you know, she's, she's with got, another big magazine. She's with Entertainment then. Weekly. Yeah. She, yeah. she, uh, she lost that job. American I would see her she, on TV all the time commenting. She's on done that. She lost the job at America, uh, Entertainment Weekly during the, sort of the, the downturn a couple of yeah. years ago in publishing, where they were laying a lot of people off, and she was sort of new there. So she, yeah, it actually was good in a sense, because it gave her time to focus focus on mm -hmm. the book and now she's going to go back out into cool. you know into uh -huh. a new job right do you have a copy of the book we're looking at the cover behind us right now but uh, I want to see a copy of it I noticed that you have the book uh, segmented and there is a different uh, color highlight that uh, for each section now the green section are well, it's not quite like that. It's just it is. It's, it's sort of a like it's a kind of a rainbow colors in the book, but it's not the it's colors not are not, like you'll see a green here, a green there. Right. I see uh, that. So it's not like the the front of the book is comedy, so it's not all in one okay. color. But the next section after that is uh, dramas, and then we have a. Uh, uh, a section on science fiction, horror and fantasy, a section on music, a section on documentaries, a section on action and sports, what? and a section on animated now movies. Now you saw a lot of movies to, to order to write this. How many movies are in this Well, there's book 660 in the book. We counted up. We worked from a master list of about 800. The list that I started working on when I worked at High Times and then years later when I left High Times is kept adding to the list. It could be just like a note like saying Serpico, uh, Al Pacino smokes joint, you know, which is not big news, but just like to take these notes of different things. It could be George Siegel smokes pot and Alan the Pussycat. Right. It could be anything. And just go back on some of right. these movies we had never seen and s need to decide, okay, is it, does it warrant being in the book? Well, some were obvious. I mean, Apocalypse Now, that has one of the most obvious uh, pot scenes in any movie I've ever seen. Well, they're seen. smoking on the boat and uh, and also, you know, there's the tripping scene you oh, know, I think, towards I think the end. Platoon. Platoon has, yes, Platoon, Platoon has a more famous one, scene, right. the shotgun, the right. famous Willem oh. Dafoe, Charlie Sheen right, shotgun Right, right, using scene. the shotgun. A real right. shotgun. Yeah, I know. But that, really that, that, that's interesting because I, I look at Platoon as like, this is the stoner and the straights in that yeah. Platoon and there was sure. a big fight between the two and Charlie Sheen's brought in with the shotgun yeah. hit and it's like if he takes the shotgun hit, he's with one group, if he doesn't, he's with the other. And he chooses to be with the stoners. Right. <laughs> Looking for Mr. Goodbar. I haven't seen that That's forever. kind of a dark movie. It's it a, is it's quite a, a dark movie. It's a sad movie. It's a sad yeah. movie. Yeah. You think about, you know, how, what a great year uh, Diane Keaton had in 1977. She was in both uh, Annie Hall and Looking for Mr. 
oh, yeah. Mr. Good Bar in the same year. It's it's a really raw I know, 70s I, movie. I notice you have like pot leaves, like four leaves, three and a half leaves. Those are ratings uh, out of a five. Right, so let's look at a five. Let's see, we have a... Uh, you have to look hard for fives. So yeah, we probably have hard only, have, only have about 20 in the book kids, or so. Kids, right, I saw that. That's right. about our neighborhood. I have a question I wanted to ask you. Like, have you noticed trends in different years, like that there was a lot of movies that would count as stoner movies, say, in 64 or... Do you see what I mean? Did yeah, it well, I, I, do, I, do, I do think it's very sociological. Um, you know, there really wasn't a positive portrayals of marijuana use in movies until the late 60s. You know, Easy Rider's kind of the breakthrough, the guy sitting around the campfire having a good time. Yeah, something bad happens to them later on, but it's not because they smoke pot. It is because there was a big division in the country yeah, and right. the rednecks didn't like the hippies and that was the story of the time and they, they right. were the anti-heroes. Um, but you know, Actually, it's the one scene because the, the alcoholics and the potheads are all sitting there. And well, they're, there's, they're, you know, Jack Nicholson's yes. character, George, is like, I don't, you know, I have enough problem with the booze, he says, yeah. and, you know, I said, no, try this, George, right. and then it's really instructional, you know, he tells him right. to hold it in, right. you know, it's really great, it's such a, you know, right. uh, a definitive scene, uh, sure. uh, you know, for our book, and uh, so, yeah, so then through the 70s, you know, things, you know, 70s had sort of a lightness to it, you know, a fun era, mm. and so by the late 70s, you had Cheech and Chong, you know, you know, starting this, what we call the stoner comedy genre, I mean, sure. it, it really, they started with them, the two right. guys, the grandfathers. yeah, right. the grandfathers, I mean, so many movies have come since with two guys, usually Mm -hmm. going up on a crazy adventure stone like Harold and Kumar or yes right exactly you know, milk you have here by milk, the way yeah I mean well we had we had uh, uh, Charlie Beale and uh, Gilbert here and they were talking about milk we had well milk is counterculture yes. obviously so that's an over, that's another one right. of the themes and it has Dennis Perone there yeah, that's for exactly. that movie, right? Well, interesting. I find that Milk is sort of a little bit of a, you know, Milk's got away from the marijuana issue. You know, he matter of fact tells his, you know, James Franco, his boyfriend, you know, concentrate on something other than legalizing pot. Right. He cuts his hair, and that's not really his issue anymore. Because it was, cross over. But, but it was early in the story, and sure. later in the story, he leaves marijuana alone. It's not my issue anymore. So I find that interesting, and we do deal with that. A um, graduate has four and a half. That's pretty good. Bad. That's a that's a that's a true favorite. That's a favorite of Shirley's in terms of like she said it, it, when in, in the the intro of the book, she wrote that you know this was the movie that really turned her on to movies, uh -huh. and and I say Easy Rider was the movie, not so much turned me on to movies, but just turned me on to this Stoner subject movie. within Stoner you know, movies. yeah this <laughs> genre. Sure. Uh, but I love The Graduate. There's no right. problem in The Graduate, but it's right. counterculture and its theme. Right. Um, so and going back to the sociological stuff, so you had that '70s thing, and very light. You know, you have movies like Caddyshack going into the '80s. There was sort of a merger of the Cheech and Chong and the Saturday Night Live and the SCTV mm. and the National Lampoon, right. all kind of exploded together. in the 70s, late yeah. 70s. So really fun movies, you know, to kind of turn into like movies later in the 80s, like Ghostbusters and stuff like that, Harold Ramis's movies, and uh, you know, all those guys who really did a great job back then. And so, but the 80s, just say no, Reagan, stuff like that. So the ha-has, you know, started to sort of go downhill a little bit, and it got more serious, less pot, more coke in movies, therefore Scarface, you mm -hmm. know. There seemed to be more coke in the 80s. And then by the 90s, when uh, Clinton comes into office in 93, we look at a movie, Dazed and Confused, as the movie that kind of opened, you know, the door to this new generation of stoner movies. And it was, you know, the timing was right. You know, Clinton was in office, a good pot theme movie, you know, mm -hmm. was what was needed. Uh, so I think it kind of has carried on since then. During the Bush era, you know, even though, you know, Bush was so negative on the drug thing, you know, it hasn't stopped the stoner movies. It's sort of like the door is open, the genie's, out of the, the the genie's out of the bottle. So it's, it seems like it's going to happen yeah. regardless. He didn't have the same <laughs> cultural impact as Ronald Reagan. Uh, Ronald well, and Nancy saying, just well, say no. Well, the times had evolved, yeah. too. Yeah, I, I just think that the door had opened, the genie was out of the bottle, and Hollywood had suddenly noticed that these it movies, you know, sense. do right. well, so let's do some more. Well, now we're looking at it in a couple of weeks. Marijuana might even be legalized in the state of California. Very exciting. First time over. Uh, yes, on 19. You know, all right. <laughs> now, uh, let's see, French Connection, four and a half. But I noticed the first five I found, Clockwork Orange. Another dark movie, but a great movie. You know, yeah. one, of, one of Kubrick's great movies. And there is a drug theme to that where they drink, you know, mm -hmm. this synth mask that kind of kind of sends them off on their rage. Now, drugs and directors, which directors do you think were the most oriented towards uh, I like to look at things. I like to look at uh, Oliver Stone. You know, he in our book. You know, I would say a guy like him. He he has a lot of entries in this book because so many of his movies, you know, have an undercurrent of drug. Mm -hmm. Use in it, sure. whether it's a movie like Salvador, the, Salvador, <laughs> whether the first it's one, one of the first right, ones. whether whether it's a movie like uh, The Doors, which is sort of all about the character, you know, using a lot of drugs. Um, he wrote Midnight Express, he wrote Scarface. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy's 
probably the, the, he's the greatest of the directors in our book. I'd say Gus Van Zant is another mm -hmm. one. Drugstore Cowboy, uh, My Own Private Idaho. He's done some really interesting movies lately mm -hmm. that you know kind of go into the counterculture area. Mm -hmm. um, Richard Linklater, the director of Days to Confused, a Fast Food Nation. Uh, you know, a Scanner Darkly, uh, Slackers, you know, I mean, these are directors we like to follow, the Farrelly brothers on the right. comedy side. You know, they've always sort of found a way to work marijuana into li a lot of their, their now, movies. Now, Steve Bloom, author with Shirley Halpern of Reefer Movie Madness, the ultimate stoner film guide, you see it behind us. Tell us how people can find out. First, Steve, tell us how people can find out about this book and more information about it. Well, uh, we have a website, ReeferMovieMadness.com, so you can read all about it there. You could also go to CelebStoner.com, where I cover it on my website. Um, that's your blog, Celeb That's Stoner. my blog website. Um, CelebStoner.com. C-E-L-E-B Stoner, exactly. one word. S-T-O-N-E-R. Okay. It's an interesting website. And, and then, of course, ReeferMovieMadness.com, where com. you but, can read about the book. But also Amazon, of course. Uh, it's in bookstores, uh, Barnes & Noble, uh, Borders. It's in Urban Outfitters, nice big stacks. Uh, uh -huh. Spencer's Gifts. Uh, okay. it, it's, it's, every, it's, it's everywhere. It's a good follow-up to our last I'd book like that was all over the place. Okay, There's something I'd like to revisit, which is the LSD scene. To me, in, that has, in, in any movie, oh, okay. like, it has such an uh, opportunity to either be great or horrible. Right. And so I was wondering, like, what do you think is the best LSD scene versus the worst? Well, I don't know about a worst, but I have to think. Okay, first, uh, I didn't like the LSD scene in Taking Woodstock. Uh, the movie about Woodstock that came out, you know, to coincide with the 40th anniversary. Uh, I thought um, it, it, uh, Ang Lee, who directed that movie, probably never took LSD in his life, so it just didn't feel like mm -hmm. you were in the middle of this LSD scene. The greatest is Easy Rider in the cemetery. I mean, it's the trippiest, most mm -hmm. outrageous. I mean, there's a lot of LSD scenes over the years, but that's, that's the one that, again, was the first of its How about time. natural born killers? Well, they do a uh, peyote or mushrooms, right. and they kill the Indian uh, yeah, guy. It's really terrible. Yeah. It's such a bummer. I, I mean, I, I, I have to say, it, uh, it's very dark. You know, it's, yeah. a, it's, not, it's not necessarily my favorite, but it, of, of Stones of War, but I, uh, but it, but it is an interesting movie. Hunter S. Thompson. <laughs> well, I love Hunter S. Thompson. There's two movies about Hunter S. Thompson. Well, there's three. Yes. There's a documentary, but there's, you know, it's a good debate. I find people love Fear and Loathing and Las Vegas, the movie. I love the book. I'm not as enamored by the movie. I yeah. thought another example, Terry Gilliam, the director who admitted he hadn't done LSD, you yeah. know, yet does all this LSD sort of yeah. uh, um, presentation in the movie, and I thought it was a little bit off and a little bit kind of macabre. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. But there's the Where the Buffalo Roam with Bill Murray that came out in, the, in like 1980, 81 or so when he was just starting his career as an actor. That I thought really captured the lunacy and the uh, the inspiration and the humor that Hunter Thompson. I mean, I sat mm -hmm. and read, you know, Fear and Loathing on the subway in New York when I was a kid, laughing hysterically. And trying, <laughs> you know, it's like it was such a funny read, but I didn't think Fear and Loathing mm -hmm. was a funny movie. How about extremely exotic drugs? Any movies that featured extremely exotic drugs? Well, you know, a Dune. Dune has their has oh, a drug right. like uh, a lot of, lot of movies yeah, like this. This guy really knows <laughs> Dune. I, you know, we, we, we have a page in there for, yeah, yeah. for, for sort of fictional drugs. Uh, Formula uh -huh. 51 is a movie with a drug that's supposed to be 51 times stronger than anything that's ever been before with Samuel <laughs> L. Jackson. There are a lot of movies like that, um, but uh, yeah, there are, you know, there's these sort of odd fictional sure, you know, drugs. Sure, through Scanner Darkly, I guess. Yeah, that's right, exactly. What was sure. the, I forget the name of that drug. I read the book. In the book, it's in it there. It splits your uh, brain into, right? Well, it's uh, something for or something oh, with a number. Oh, speaking of well, it. how about narcs? How about the the, uh, the crazy narc type people? How about dealer movies? Uh, you know, Riders of the Purple Sage, Henry, crazy dealer movies, Boston well, or like, Berkeley, well, Forty Brick. Book. That's in there. Uh, that's in there. Wow, that's a, that's a rare one. Uh, I know. I love to see it. I Rush can't. Rush would be a good one uh, as far as dealer movies. I mean, that's a you know story of mm -hmm. a dealer at, you know played by Jason Patrick who's really deep into it and doing all the drugs uh -huh. and you know turn is a junkie right. uh, but he's also his right. job is he's not a dealer he's a narc right. and you know so but he's always taking the drugs okay. and using them uh, Jennifer Jason Lee comes in as like the young you know like partner and she's trying to fit in so it's very interesting to right. follow her but actually he's real dirty he tries to set up uh, the character played by mm -hmm. uh, by Greg Ullman in the movie, and she's kind of the conscience right. and doesn't agree with it. How about lawyer movies? Is that one lawyer who's I forget what was the movie where he's like Smoky Pot and they say somebody uh, makes. Oh, you're talking about James Woods. James and, Woods. What right. was that movie? That was um, one of those legal eagle type movies. Yes. And uh, he's like the old '60s guy, 
and they desperately need him as the only one who can handle this case because everybody thinks the guy's guilty mm -hmm. and everybody's against him. I yeah, always, you can look it up. I always have, I always have a problem remembering that movie, but right. I know exactly right. which Steve one you're talking Blue. about. By the way, we're here live, so I, our number, I think, is on the screen, 212-757-1538, uh, 212-757-1538. Unfortunately, we're on eight second delay so if you call up as soon as we answer you got to turn your television down okay turn your television down if you call as soon as you pick up the phone 212-757-1538 so would you ever consider doing like a film festival of stoner movies or that would be great if anybody <laughs> hires me i'm ready actually i just did something out in california i came back from the smoke out event in san bernardino that's the cypress hill uh festival that was just mm -hmm. this saturday and there was a we had a movie uh, uh dome that they called on the site and we showed four movies and i curated that um it was days of confused pulp fiction um the big lebowski and friday it was 15th anniversary f anniversary for friday so you know i'm, I'm available for such yeah, you know definitely. duties uh, yeah. and i would love to get involved with festivals that yeah. exist and maybe looking to program some stoner movies or looking to do a nice little panel discussion i'm available for that as well now let's say we have some folks out there what are true believer a oh, true believer. That was the name of the movie. <laughs> there See, go. there's the guy I knew. I knew. It was I don't there. know why. I, I have a block on the name of that movie. Right. I guess I don't like the title. Right. Um, okay. So let's say to the listeners out there who are fa following this uh, this discussion, ten mo ten movies that would make begin your collection. How would you begin a collection of stoner movies? Uh, my suggestions. Ten movies. Yes. Ten uh, movies well, like, must have. Well, like I've said, uh, Up in Smoke, Days to Confuse, Scarface. Um, you know, you could, let's say, uh, I don't know, Half-Baked, uh -huh. uh, Drugstore Cowboy, um, Apocalypse Now is a good one, uh, Goodfellas, I think, is a great one, because there's all that coke in it. Um, you know, The Man with the Golden Arm, Reefer yeah. Madness. Um, mm -hmm. right, the original, one of the originals. The, yeah. Uh, yes. There's those something like that. Great you know, right. So those are ten great movies train, right there. Train Spotting. Train spotting, 11, and there, you know, there's, some, there's so many. Uh, Friday, I love Friday. Yeah, you know, that was probably the, you know, the first one. Pineapple Express or Harold yeah. and Kumar, the first sure, one. Sure, sure, you know. sure. How about, uh, did you, did you talk, with, talk about TV series? That mentioned no, that we didn't one? get into that. That's a whole other subject. I mean, I yeah. follow that, you know, very closely. Because um, you had the 70s show, you had... Uh, uh, you, can go, yeah, you can go back. I mean, Reeds obviously... On TV, but that 70s show was broadcast TV where it was pretty much pot was in every... And it was positive. Although they never really showed it, but it was always implied. You right. know, because right. the, the, when, they, when they ran on the circle, yeah, and they had a little all smoky, be, but you never yeah. saw it. That's as much yeah. as they could do on TV. Yes. There's a lot of marijuana content on TV now. Uh, it's kind of in episodes. It was just an L, uh, a law and order in L.A. about a, a killing in a marijuana dispensary. They just used it as a backdrop. It wasn't necessarily... Right. A favorable storyline. I heard there sure. was one on Desperate Housewives this week as well. So it's working its way more and more and more right. into TV. I think it's hard to keep. If it becomes, for example, if California passes Proposition 19, they legalize marijuana. There's like the movie industry. 80% of the They'll movie industry. They'll be all over it. Right. I mean, and not to mean that they're going to, there might be some TV shows that could be rushed out, because interestingly, Weeds is in its sixth season, there's no competition. Mm -hmm. Nobody's come along to really, Breaking Bad, which is a great show, but that's like Weeds on Speed, yeah, which right. is great, but it's not, <laughs> It's know, a great movie, but it's really about, the, the, the speed dealing is really just the, the drama, that it drives the drama. You in know? a way, it's similar, because you have the, the main characters, you know, there's the husband who goes off, you know, he's a teacher and decides to, you know, make meth, and then you have in Weeds, you have the, the housewife, you know, whose husband so dies and tries yeah. to find a new way to make a living. So both of them sort of went off on a different path, starting from mm -hmm. a real suburban, you sure. know, very straight base. <laughs> right, right, um, right. So there are similarities. Um, uh, there's a really, uh, Bored to Death is a really fun show on HBO now that has a lot of weed content with Jason Schwartzman. They're using vaporizers for uh -huh. that show. Oh, wow. So they've gone. They have the volcano on several episodes. They're right up to right. date. Yeah, they are up to date. <laughs> How about foreign films? We have some in there. Um, a City of God is like sort of one of my favorites in this book. The Brazilian classic. That's kind of the Brazilian Scarface. Uh, Itumama Tambien, or the, the Mexican Road movie, was a lot of pot smoking. Um, Christian F, a German movie, you know, which is about a young woman who turns and becomes a junkie. Uh, we have a little section on foreign films, and mm -hmm. it's like kind of spiced in throughout. There's also like oh, there's uh, uh, three movies called The Pusher that are uh, Danish movies that are very, very. You know, like Tarantino-esque, uh -huh. pretty violent, uh, but really sure. strong. Very good, very good. Well, uh, gosh, what do you want to? The last. This is so fascinating. I don't know where to pick. Let's um, 
Let's talk about the worst ones. What were the absolute worst ones? Well, that's a good question. I mean, it's kind of no, come tomatoes, up a lot. In, it's tomatoes. come up a lot in interviews. Um, not too many really terrible ones. We we tend to go back to like movies like a movie called The Stone Age, which was a follow up to Days and the Confused, or tried. But it was really there's a tendency for stoner movies, especially the comedies, to be sort of B or C quality movies because they don't yeah. spend a lot of money on it. So a there's yeah, there's a labor of love, but sometimes <laughs> right. it doesn't really work out. Uh, there's a movie called Totally, Totally Stoned, I think it is, a potumentary, which was just pretty <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and, you know, we put them in the book. I mean, there's nothing that has less than one leaf in the book. We have a couple oh, of one and a half. What was that documentary that we saw on oh, grass. grass. Yeah. Oh, Grass is great. Yeah, I mean, that I love that. Really that's that's good. that's like four, four and a half stars. I mean, okay, Ron Mann cool. is a great director. Oh. But you know, but who we haven't talked about is uh, Bill Hicks. Bill Hicks, of who's, course. Who, who's, who, who is in, who is in this book? Let me find the little section here. I know right. we have a little thing on stand up, uh, like movie. Is it in here? I know we're kind of running down. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Right. We got three there. minutes. Let me see. Where did I? Must see stand up movies. Okay. Uh, oh, Richard Bill Pryor. Hicks, Bill Sane, Sane Man. Sane Man. Oh. Yeah, yes. so he so makes it into the book. Right okay, on. Lenny I Bruce. Made I made sure to include that. Richard Thank Pryor. <laughs> yeah. Okay, of course, these guys. Of course, Richard Pryor, that labor union movie about like uh, racial divisions in a factory where they were like all snorting coke out of the. Off the table. I, I don't. Uh, blue, I remember the seventies. I remember the scene, but I'm blue not. Collar yeah, blue collar. Blue collar. Yeah. Right, that was it. Blue collar. That didn't make it into the book, but uh, but you know this Richard Pryor one particular movie. We could have done all of them, but this is the one when he's coming yeah. back from his his, his crack that. episode when he yeah, got when he got sure. burnt up. You know. Did you find you had to? Um, edit down. You weren't really searching for more and more. Though. Well, we wish we could have, but we had a deadline that we had yeah. to hit. We actually missed our deadline initially, or kind of went right by it. Uh, we were, they wanted to get the book out in the spring or around the 420 yeah. cycle because our last book, Pot Culture, came April out two years ago. Around then, they figured it's a good time, yeah. and I just like, you know, said we're not ready yet. You know, we needed more time to review more movies and so we you know we didn't want to cut things out you know we wanted to include everything there's only a handful of movies that didn't really make it into the book that nothing really super major but just a matter of you came to a point where you know you just couldn't Gotta keep right at the close but, 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 but the good thing was yeah. that you know people kept giving us ideas I mean if, if I was sitting with, with you before we wrote the book I'm sure you would have thrown out a few yeah. maybe the dealing movie and and I would have like oh write that one down right. and then go look for it. dealing by the way uh, really hard to find and <clears throat> I didn't even know it, it was I read the book when I was a kid I didn't even no, it was uh, Michael Crichton. Michael Crichton's and first his brother, book. right? Or did they do it together? I think. I, and they, I they think took another name. They took the name Michael Douglas. Yeah, something like yes. that. Yes, it was. <laughs> they took two. Right. They, they took Michael and his brother. Somebody took the name threw Michael. it out in the garbage, <clears throat> and I got it out of the garbage behind the library and read it. Well, when right, Crichton. Right. 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 Yes. Right. So when Crichton died, uh, you know, I, I was interested in this movie, never seen it, and then it became available in Warner Archives, and I just picked it up. I found it online. Great, right. great. Just came out. Now, how about a movie. Plan 9 from Outer Space movie? So, a movie so there. bad, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so bad, it's good. Hmm. I don't have one for you. I, uh, if we're in, in this book, so bad, it's good. Um, There's probably a few in there that are like, they might yeah, go for that one. Yeah. Well, let's give well, the website again for the book. Yes, the it's website is... Is ReeferMovieMadness.com. ReeferMovieMadness.com. You can learn more about this book. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Paul. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Joni. Anytime. Steve Bloom. Thank you. Stumped me on right. that last one. It's okay. <laughs>